Have you ever wondered about reverb? I am here in Unreal Engine 5 and we're going to be talking about this big yellow box. Uh, this big yellow box represents a reverb zone. Now, normally what would happen is uh, I would play a sound. So this little cube with a pretty, pretty clouds around it. Uh, normally I would play a sound from here and it would sound uh, the way it sounds. And then as it moves into a space, we'd imagine it might sound a little bit different. Like for example, it might go underneath the bridge and when it goes underneath the bridge, we're gonna have it uh, kind of sound like a tunnel or sound sound underground. Um, this idea actually comes from Angie, one of my uh, YouTube uh, subscribers from South Korea. Hello, Angie. Uh, this should help solve your problem. Now, uh, when the player is not, you know, you're probably telling me, well, Dave, <laughs> reverb zones like we get it we already know this uh you know we would go to uh our reverb zone we would set up an audio volume here we'd kind of go to reverb and we'd tick apply reverb and we put a reverb effect on now the issue with that is that it only works while the play is inside the reverb container and not uh not you know that's not always the case so for example i have this box here that's going to be playing one of the glockenspiel uh bits that i recorded in the last video and it's uh it, it would sound pretty weird if it went into the tunnel and it didn't sound any different until i got closer to it so how do we actually set this up well in the end it sounds like this So you can hear as the source moves into the reverb zone, I start hearing some of those delays, even if I personally am outside the reverb zone, which is exactly what we're wanting. Now, again, I'm gonna say reverb zone a lot in this video. Um, audio volume, reverb zone, uh, you know, containers, etc., etc. Now, how do we set this up? Well, we create a new uh, audio volume, which is gonna be this uh, this box here. Now I've just added a little cube here so that we can actually see it, but really it's the larger, the larger box that's around the cube and not the cube itself. I just kind of like the yellow, if I'm perfectly honest. So <laughs> uh, once you've created an audio volume, we need to go and set some things up. First up, we probably wanna have priorities. Now, priorities are important if you're gonna have overlapping zones. So if you're gonna have one zone here and one zone under the bridge, we need to determine which one should take priority and trigger it. Now, in this instance, we'd probably have one, which would be this kind of open foyer area, and that would be one priority, and maybe it wouldn't be 99, maybe it'd be one. And then we'd have like another one underneath the tunnel so that if you were on a gondola going underneath, um, you would hear uh, the sounds of the gondola would be reverberating. So, you know, even if you're sitting here on the riverbank, this gondola going past with the beautiful Italian man singing his questionably beautiful Italian song uh, passing through the boat, passing through the tunnel. Now, uh, how do we set this up? So we've already talked about priority and it obviously needs to be enabled. You'll need uh, a sound source. In my instance, I'm just using this glockenspiel. Um, I'm gonna be setting it to looping just so it goes on and on, but it, it does work without looping elements. And we're gonna have a class here. Now the class itself uh, has nothing special except for one parameter. When we make this sound class, we need to look for this apply ambient volumes. Now without this, literally nothing will work. I can't tell you how long I have spent looking for sometimes just this. Um, so uh, set up that class, set up the, uh, yeah, this is all we're really looking to do here. There is absolutely nothing else special here. Uh, I, I have the submix settings turned on, all this is default, the attenuation settings. I've set up an attenuation here, uh, but it doesn't actually matter because I'm, I'm setting it up. Uh, again, on on the spot, on the on the uh, audio source itself, wherever my beautiful speaker cube. Um, so yeah, my speaker cube itself uh, is a pretty plain blueprint. Um, it looks more complicated than it is, but all of this is literally just pickup logic, um, and it plays a sound uh, on awake. So you know, sometimes we don't make so many scripting things uh, inside Unreal. 
the sphere itself has uh, the sample on it and uh, an attenuation, and it actually doesn't have anything else uh, funky going on. Obviously, you can play around with meta sounds and do your thing, just not in this video. Sorry. The volume itself, back to the volume, we don't need to worry too much about the brush size, that it's going to be like how the brush, how the, how the shape looks. And we don't need to worry too much about these, uh, this sort of fade in and out components. They help uh, control the sound over time. They control transitions into the volume, uh, which we're not overly concerned about. I guess I've got a very quick one just to, to make it really obvious. The main part we're going to be looking into is this submix. Now you'll see um, I have quite a few components here that I need to make. I don't think I'm using this reverb container trigger at all. No, don't worry about that one. I have quite a few components that you need to make. Um, I've got the sample. I've got the sound class that we're triggering. I've got this multi-tap delay, uh, which is a submix effect that's being played. We have the sound submix, which is going to be this bridge submix area. And then I have the speaker cube. So these four elements are the ones you'll need for this example. Uh, the speaker cube obviously just being uh, playing a volume sound. Now this, uh, this volume, uh, this submix, what's happening here? Well, we have a couple of options and you can even set up multiple versions of them. And it's basically to determine what the behavior should be, whether the listener is inside or outside. So uh, if I'm outside, I don't necessarily want to apply all the reverbs or maybe I do. Um, when I'm inside the volume, maybe I don't want to apply the reverbs because there's like more important sounds going on. Um, you can see it is an array, so I can load up more, uh, more volumes and more elements, but I am just going to use just the one for now. I'm going to be using this for when the listener is outside the volume, um, although I would probably also need to play another one for it being inside the volume um, so that if the person is underneath the bridge, they to hear it. Uh, but again, they might want direct source and it, it gets a little bit funky from there. The submix sends, um, I'm going to have a linear send. So there is going to be a distance element to this. Um, you kind of get more uh, send as, as you are closer to it. So you get a more pronounced effect. We have a really cool setting here, actually pre and post distance attenuation. So pre distance attenuation would be like sending this thing at full volume. And then it would be like a really, really wet source. Whereas post distance attenuation is going to be sending the volume of the game object in the world um, at the volume that it is with the attenuation that's been added. I have a sound submix here. The sound submix has absolutely nothing special going on here, except for the fact that I've turned it up a little bit and, uh, and I have this multi-tap delay thing going on. The multi-tap delay again is, is really just a really pronounced effect. Um, but one of the cool things here is that you can set up a whole chain and make a whole bunch of new submix effects. And Unreal even have uh, things like convolution reverb where you can do impulse responses or uh, compressors at different distances or having some tap delays and reverbs and multiband compressors and really all sorts of stuff. Uh, for me, I'm gonna be using something quite quite simple here with the multi-tap delay because it's super obvious what I'm doing. And uh, I'm gonna be sending it pretty much at max. Um, and we will be having, yeah, some send, min send, max send distance. This is the, that attenuation with that linear interpolation based on how far away we are from it being sent. Now, the these are all the components that we actually need here. Um, to get this working. There is nothing else special that needs to happen. So let's hear how it sounds. Now, while I'm outside the volume, um, if I turned up my speakers, there we go. While I'm outside the volume, you'll hear this thing. It's quite dry. And if I pick up my box and put it inside the volume, right. And now we can hear that multi-tap delay going off. Now you'll notice I am not inside the volume. So if I step into the volume, we actually lose the multi-tap delay, which is really cool because we're kind of bringing us in so it doesn't get all reverberant because we're here. Now this works great for things like uh, bullet cartridges or throwing a bomb off into a distance, uh, an area that you might not necessarily be immediately in. If we wanted to change that so that it worked only while we were inside the volume, 
And then what we're expecting to happen here is it sounds dry. We put the box in, right? And it sounds dry because we're not inside the volume. And then as we get up close to it, now we'll start to hear the multi-tap. There we go. Now, it's a really subtle effect, uh, but when you have these elements, and you, as I said, you can actually stack these, so we can have like multiple, so we could have like one version for when we're inside and one version for when we're outside the volume, um, even set up a, a different a different attenuation or a different submix altogether, um, and it should give you a lot of control about how to use your uh, space in Unreal with just a couple of audio volumes and uh, it's a really fantastic feature. Um, it's a great way to get around the portal problem of um, Unreal not having things like Wise's room portals um, because it gets you sort of fake transmission through portals and through doorways and holes and things like that if you use it this way. Uh, thanks so much for joining me. Um, I will slap up the blueprint for the speaker cube on my website at weaveraudio.com. Um, otherwise, if you like this video, I'd appreciate a follow or a like or a subscription or a uh, really whatever you want to do. Thanks so much and I will see you next time.